for best paper competition, non-professional or undergraduate category. This best paper competition is a scientific session that aims to recognize excellence in microbiological research. The research papers that qualify for the competition based on the preliminary and secondary screenings are then scheduled for final oral presentations. Today, we will listen to the final presentations of the three finalists from the non-professional or undergraduate category. The presentation of each finalist will then be followed by a five-minute question and answer portion. Priority questions will be coming from our esteemed judges. For the audience on site, you may write your questions on the paper that will be provided. For the audience online, please type in your questions on the comment box. And we will try our best to accommodate all of them when time permits. To introduce the judges and to orient us on the criteria for judging, may we call on Professor Edison J. Pagoso, Division Representative for Basic Microbiology. Thank you very much, uh, Sir Kayla. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. And welcome to the best paper competition non-professional category. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the presence of the Best Paper Competition Committee headed by Professor Hannah Din. And the members are Dr. P. Ranjini Vital, Professor Angelia Melissa Carlos, Professor Joanna Rachel San Pedro, Professor Emerson Cruz, Dr. Levelin Espiritu and Dr. Crisanto Lopez. Before we begin the most awaited oral presentations, allow me to first introduce to you the panel of judges who will evaluate the performances of our aspiring young researchers. We are very honored to have with us today the first judge is Dr. Albert Ramos R. Rosana, member of the panel of judges. Dr. Albert Ramos R. Rosana is a current science and technology fellow leading the Tuklas Lunas or Drug Discovery and Development Program of the Philippine Council for Health Research and Development, Department of Science and Technology. Dr. Rosana holds a Doctor of Philosophy in Chemistry from the University of Alberta, Canada. He graduated Bachelor of Science in Biology from the University of the Philippines, Las Banas, Magna Cum Laude, and Master's Degree in Microbiology and Biotechnology at the University of Alberta in Canada. He is a Kit Killam Laureate, an Alexander Graham Bell Scholar, a Major General George Vanier Awardee, and Her Royal Highness Queen Elizabeth II Scholar. This year, Dr. Albert was conferred the National Academy of Science and Technology Outstanding Young Scientist of the Year, which is awarded to Filipinos who have made significant contributions to science and technology in our country. Let us all welcome Dr. Albert Ramos Rosano. Another member of the panel of judges is Dr. Jessica Simbahan. Dr. Simbahan finished her BS Food Technology and MS Microbiology from the University of the Philippines, Los Banos. She took her PhD at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln where she finished her PhD in Biological Sciences in 2004. She worked as a researcher at the National Institute of Molecular Biology and Biotechnology, Biotech at UPLB for 35 years on research topics such as nitrogen fixation of Azola and Nabina symbiosis, the rhizobium legume symbiosis and on enzyme production and improvement of yeasts for ethanol production. In 2016, she moved to the Institute of Biology in UP Diniman, where she became a full-time faculty of the Microbiology and Cell Biology Academic Group. Her research interests are on microbial ecology and biotechnology. Again, let's welcome Dr. Jessica F. Simbang. And last but not the least, the chair of the panel of judges, we have Dr. Franco Tevez. Dr. Franco Gaite Tevez finished his BS Medical Technology Magna Cum Laude at Silliman University in 1980. He obtained both his MS and PhD degrees in Microbiology 
from the University of the Philippines to Espanos in 1990, 1988 and 2001 respectively with sub-specialization in molecular genetics at the Universidad de Leon, Spain. He rose in rank from instructor to associate professor, then to full professor, serving in various capacities as department chair, director for research, and vice chancellor for academic affairs. His research works cover areas in fungal biotechnology, bacterial virulence genes, drug discovery, natural products, and biosecurity. Once again, let us all welcome the chair of the Board of Judges, Dr. Franco Ellis. Thank you uh, to our esteemed judges for accepting the invitation to be part of this momentous event. Now, back to the contest proper. Okay, I will just mention the mechanics and when you have questions later, you may use the microphone available to raise your questions. Okay, now each presenter is given 15 minutes to present his or her research. The allotted time will be strictly implemented. Finalists, please be mindful of the time placards found at that uh, area. So you will be uh, given 15 minutes, but uh, you will be reminded of your time after uh, oh, 10 minutes will be flashed and then after 5 minutes, 2 minutes, and time's up. Extension beyond 15 minutes will merit a deduction from the total points, one, minute, one point deduction per minute of extension. The presentation will then be followed by a five minute question and answer portion from the judges. Audience from the on-site Likewise, we still have their questions, but uh, they are, there will be, the questions will be answered later, personally, or via email after the competition. Criteria for judging are shown on the screen. To give an idea, manuscript will comprise 60% of the score, and the oral presentation will get 40%. The best paper award will be given to the research that obtained the highest rating. However, a minimum score of 70% must be obtained to be uh, awarded the uh, best, post, best paper competition winner. In case of tie, both papers will receive the award. The winner of the competition will receive a cash prize a certificate, a plaque of appreciation, and will be forever become a part of the PSM history. And a, a reminder uh, for uh, the audience with us right now, um, please be reminded that uh, you are expected to practice proper decorum or etiquette during and after the competition. Okay, now, competitors, the floor is open for some questions and clarifications. Do you have any? Okay, if not, so we will begin the best paper competition non-professional category. For finalist number one, the first paper will be presented by Ms. Jane Crystal Raphael J. Macapas and her paper is titled Evaluation of a Bacteriophage Prey Formulation Against Salmonella Enterica Cerevar Typhimorium in Raw Beef. May we call on Miss Jane Crystal Raphael J. Macapas. Good afternoon everyone, my name is Jane Houston Macapas and I will be presenting our study entitled Evaluation of a Bacteriophage Spray Formulation Against Salmonella Enterica Cerevarite Premierium in Raw Beef. So this will be the contents of my presentation and for the introduction. Foodborne illnesses are an emerging threat to public health. These are caused by food, foodborne pathogens such as salmonella which causes salmonellosis. Salmonellosis is a form of gastroenteritis 
And just last September 2022, a total of 500 acute gastroenteritis infections was recorded in Iloilo City. The symptoms of this disease include abdominal cramps, diarrhea, vomiting, fever, chills, and nausea. According to Azanza et al. 2022, a total of 209 foodborne disease outbreaks have happened in the Philippines since 2005 to 2018. And this figure shown uh, made by Limon et al. 2022, they have shown the foodborne disease outbreak distribution that have happened just in the schools in the Philippines since 2005 to 2021. A total of 63 outbreaks occurred and 23 of which are caused by salmonella. Moreover, um, salmonella infection, food poisoning caused by salmonella was recorded in Bulacan and salmonella infection was linked to ground beef. So, in this study, Santos and Al were able to detect salmonella from nine wet in raw and processed meat samples from nine wet markets in the Philippines. So, bacteriophages. Bacteriophages are viruses which infects bacteria and they have a highly specific lytic ability against their host and they are classified based on their replication strategy and life cycle, which are lytic and temperate. This is one of the main hallmarks of the biocontrol phage applications. So examples of the phage, salmonella phages are phage FD7, which was used by Tong et al. 2017 to inhibit salmonella in raw meat. UAB V20, 78, and 87 was used by Prisico et al. 2013 to inhibit salmonella in chicken breast. And Cocktail combination of A3CE, PF01, and PF02 was used by Santos and Papa 2020 to inhibit salmonella in ready-to-eat foods. So there are many conventional methods being used to, for food safety and decontamination, but this affects the appearance and nutritional value of food. Thus, the use of patch-based products as food sanitizers are being promoted. And biotechnological companies such as Intralytics and Microos develop patch-based products and as of the moment, there are no available patch-based products in the Philippines. Thus, our study aimed to screen isolated phages as candidates for therapeutic use in cocktail preparation for biocontrol of foodborne pathogens, to determine the efficiency of the isolated bacteriophages as cocktail preparation in reducing the number of salmonella in packaged beef at two temperatures, which are 4 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius, and to develop a fudge prototype product containing a cocktail of fudges that can be applied by the spray type method for application in packaged beef. So next, for, our, for the significance of our study, we aim to control the food, food pathogens to, aim, to improve the microbiological safety of food, to promote the production of natural and organic food free from pathogens, to improve the biopreservation and biosanitation techniques for future researchers, health professionals, and policymakers, to strengthen the management of global health risks, and to develop the spray product that could possibly be the first patch product in the Philippines. So for our methodology, our, our study underwent through several stages of experimentation, and for the patch purification, um, Multiple chronological rounds of spot test, plaque assay, picking, and high titer preparations were done, followed by the fudge characterization, fudge nomenclature, plaque morphology, and brain morphology using the transmission electron microscopy. And we also investigated the fudge stability with um, different pH levels and temperatures. So moving on to the in vitro biocontrol in triptych soy broth, we had a total of three treatments, which are the three monophages, the fudge cocktail, and the negative control. The, our samples were then incubated at the two temperatures, which are 4 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius. And they were subjected to a spread tape method on XLD and plant assay. So moving on for the fudge spray prototype development, we formulated the cocktail using the Intralytics protocols and we procured the Badger Airbrush Model 200-1 and this airbrush was also used by Sharma et al. in 2017 for the Salmonella biocontrol applications. So we moved on to the meat testing using the ISO 6579-2017 protocol and we formulated the phages which were then sprayed onto the infected meat samples with Salmonella and then this was incubated at 4 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius and the, the samples was then homogenized using this bio-based stomacher blender and it was subjected to biocontrol applications. So for the results and discussion, from the collection of the phages from the BEAST research group, we were able to purify a total of three 
isolated phages, namely the SB26, SB51, and SB51C. SB is, an, is the abbreviation of Salmonella virus, followed by the BITS collection code from when it was originally isolated. So the isolated phages were then propagated to reach the desired high titer concentration, and the plaques had small, clear, and well-defined margin characteristic. According to Hyman 2019, the plaque appearance dictates the phage life cycle. Thus, our phages are classified as lytic, which are suitable for biocontrol and therapeutic applications. So for the variant morphology, it was ge generated through the TEM. And according to Pau et al. 2006, our phages can be classified as SP26 can be classified as myophage and SP51 can be classified as a cyphophage. It can be seen in the image, the size, the capsid size and the tail length of our monophages. So for the pH stability testing, our isolated phages are mainly stable at alkaline and slightly acidic environment. SP26 showed the best stability in pH 3. SP51 had the most narrow range of stability from pH 5 to pH 9. And SP51C showed the strongest ability at pH 11. The degradation of the fudge particles, like the fudge, the, the degradation of the fudge capsid, is the, may, we, may be one of the main factors as to why the fudges are stable or unstable in, P, in different pH levels. So moving on to the temperature, SP26 showcased the weekend activity as temperature and time increased. SP51 notably exhibited good stability at the lowest and highest temperature it was exposed to. And SP51C had the most consistent stability from 35 degrees to 50 degrees Celsius. All of our isolated phages are mainly stable even after the 90 minute incubation period. And factors affecting the temperature stability may include structure, environment, and the disulfide bonds linking the protein code. For the in vitro biocontrol results in TSB, at 4 degrees Celsius, both the monophages and the cocktail treatment significantly reduced salmonella by greater than more than 5 log reductions as compared to control. And at 30 degrees Celsius, SB51C showed the highest reduction among all treatments at day 4 with 3.5 log reduction. And SB26, SB51, and cocktail reduced salmonella by 3.1, 2.5, and 0. Point logs respectively. So, um, the, the as compared to the 4 degrees results of the 30 deg of the than, rather than the 30 degrees Celsius, it can be seen that the monophages were, was able to reduce salmonella more effectively at 4 degrees Celsius. And according to Hungaro et al. 2013, um, growth conditions of salmonella, growth conditions such as temperature, may affect the growth rate of salmonella, which in turn affects the phages ability, lytic ability. So for the fudge, fudge recovery and in vitro biomodel of salmonella, there is a significant difference between the setups on fudge recovered in both 4 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius. At 4 degrees Celsius, the fudge cocktail significantly oh, had the highest recovery on day 3. And at 30 degrees Celsius, SB51C yielded a significantly higher count on day 2. For the biocontrol of salmonella in raw meat, the fudge spray product successfully reduced salmonella by more than 5 log reductions across all days at 4 degrees Celsius and from days 2 to 4 at 30 degrees Celsius. A 3.5 log difference was recorded on day 1 of the 30 degrees Celsius setup as compared to the control and cocktail reduced salmonella more effectively at 4 degrees Celsius rather than at 30 degrees Celsius. So oh, this may be due to, due to the fact that salmonella grows optimally at 30 degrees Celsius and little qualities of phages are best preserved at 4 to 8 degrees Celsius. So these results coincide with the results of um, Santos and Papa at all 2020, wherein they have tested the phages to be, they have seen that the phages was more effective in reducing salmonella at 4 degrees Celsius rather than at 25 degrees Celsius in ready to eat foods. So for the fudge recovery in biocontrol of salmonella in raw beef, we can see the stable plaque formation across the 4 days and 30 degrees Celsius. And there is a steady increase of fudge recovery in 4 degrees Celsius. The recovered fudges will allow for further reduction of salmonella in case of reinfection in the meat samples. So this, uh, the, the results of this spearmint correlation test, there is a high negative correlation in bacterial count with respect to time at 4 degrees Celsius, which 
and which means that there, as time progressed, the bacterial count decreased. And this shows that the, the spray product was able to successfully reduce salmonella over the course of the experiment. This results was, is also identical to the results at 4 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius. So in our study, the isolated phages, SB26, SB51, and SB51C, were stable and presented lytic activity that is within the acceptable range of bacterial inhibition. The monophages and the phage cocktail significantly reduced salmonella inoculated in DSB, and the cocktail spray effectively reduced salmonella in packaged beef cuts at 4 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius. The spray cocktail prototype can be used as a guide to successfully produce a working spray product. Now, further studies can, can improve our results by testing the efficacy of lytic phages isolated from contaminated food sources than in sewage samples for bacteriophage cocktail formulation to, to compare which source is better for biocontrol applications and to study phages which target different bacterial strains other than Salmonella enterica cerevitae primurium to control other emerging pathogens and to explore possible combinations of phage cocktail and different preservatives to improve the use of phages at 30 degrees Celsius and to attempt heat collected and to attempt to collect heat adapted phages to further improve the activity of phage cocktails in higher temperatures. Now this is the end of my report. We would like to acknowledge the NYCU, the Department of Science and Technology, and the Philippine Society for Microbiology in their support and the completion of this research. These are my references. Can you scan for the QR code? Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Jean Liso Rafael Macaras. Makapas for your uh, presentation. Now, the floor of judges, you may now ask questions to the finalists. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Jane, for uh, that uh, presentation. And I really enjoyed uh, reading the manuscript. Um, I'll ask and throw a question with regards to the methodology. Uh, can you possibly explain to us uh, the rationale in using a special kind of TEM, a negative TEM, and why specifically use uh, uranyl acetate to view and identif uh, help you identify the bacteriophages that you have, whether it's myopurinate or cyclopurinate? Yes, um, we, so we use the, uh, the, for the TEM, we generated it, we sent it through the NYCU to generate the uh, the micrograph that was presented earlier, and um, the uranyl acetate is mainly to show the uh, the negative staining will show the the back the stains the background of the phages, and I think that's just um, that's just the information that I know I know as of the moment. Actually, when I was looking at the images, I've noticed that yeah, it's a bit hazy, because you know, uh, when I used to work with Seresha Fages, uh, there is a pH dependent requirement so that the image will turn out good. Uh, you mentioned that your viruses are uh, favored in the slightly as, uh, alkaline condition? Slightly acidic conditions. Uh, alkaline and slightly. Okay, so they're stable under slightly alkaline, but not under acidic. So maybe in the future, you may consider other metals that are uh, not affecting the viruses. So if you use uranium acetate, the pH of that sort of uh, metal solution is 4. So it may not favor the required alkaline or slightly alkaline condition of your viruses. So in the past, we use a phosphotanstic acid or uh, those uh, buffered you're Thank you. Thank you for your presentation, Ms. Makapas. Um, I would like to ask you about how you envision your um, front technology to be used in industry. Um, do you target who, first of all, who are your target users of the technology and how will your technology be used by these target users? Yes, um, so our um, our sample is packaged beef and we mainly use packaged beef since this there is a high consumption of, of beef 
in the Philippines right now due to the um, popularity of Korean samgyeopsal. So we wanted to um, uh, we wanted to make sure that we con we eat beef with um, safe food free from pathogens and also for early prevention of any foodborne diseases that can be that can be caused through the um, through the through eating the samgyeopsals and main our main target market if ever our pro product will be available in the market uh, we will be our main we wanted to our main focus is the um, korean restaurants korean samgyeop offering samgyeopsals um, I, well, someone has to package your meat for the Sangyopsal. So who really is your target market? Are they the, packet, the meat packaging companies or what? I think in the future, we, um, um, anyone can use the, like, for the packaging companies, they can. Uh, we have tested our meat samples into different conditions, like the 4 degrees is for the refrigerated temperature, and for the 30 degrees Celsius is for the um, storage temperature. And if our product will be be used by the people, then I think um, depending on the conditions, they can they can use our product as long as they have. Um, um, I, as long as they can have the uh, technology. Yes. <coughs> this is my time to answer the question. Thank you very much, Jane, for your paper. Uh, I have two questions. One is, uh, on, in general, which kind of preparation is more effective, monofages or cocktail? Um, so for the meat samples, um, the cocktail is more effective as 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 presented earlier. Uh, at both at 30 degrees and 4 degrees Celsius, the the cocktail was able to reduce salmonella by more than five log reductions. And can you explain the mechanism for this? The mechanism. Why is the cocktail more effective? Uh, so the cocktail is a combination of three. For our cocktail, it is a combination of three monophages. So, um, large, it was our the cocktail will be able to lyse larger, a uh, wider host, wide, and wide, specific for um, others, uh, specific for I uh, add host for salmonella, mainly salmonella. So, um, um, the uh, there is a combination of the of the like the use of the pages so the cocktail is more effective since there are three pages working together to inhibit the salmonella yeah i was really trying to look into the actual mechanism why we have a combination of the three pages that you will have a more you know more effective uh, preparation but anyway uh, another question that I would like to ask is uh, how do you envision your product? Uh, you, do you think that this is acceptable, the acceptability by the... Because that's one thing also that has to be um, considered. Have you made a sort of a survey regarding acceptability in case you're going to make use of uh, uh, fudge spray for your meat products, uh, how, would, how would our countrymen uh, respond to it? Yes, unfortunately, we weren't able to do a survey, but um, the fudges, the spray, the spray product already, uh, other countries already um, have these products, and we just tested, we formulated the spray product in our conditions, so this is still a prototype, and we are still looking into um, further to for other studies to do further experiments to really make sure that the product will be able to the product will be um, effective in our country. Yeah, because uh, if it is uh, accepted, acceptable in other countries, it may you know there are social reasons and uh, the sociological aspects will have to be considered. Okay. So, uh, lastly, how do you you have not uh, described how you you prepared your spray preparation? 
Yeah. Is there a buffer there? What uh, are so, um, components? It, it only contains the three manufacturers and 0 0.1 MNACL as per the Intralytics protocol. Yeah. No other, no buffers? No other. Just the pages and the 0 0.1 MNACL. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, judges, for your questions. And again, let's give a round of applause to Ms. Jean Rizal Rafael J. Macapas. Okay, now we go to the next finalist or presenter. The second presenter is Mr. Lawrence and Vicera, and the paper is titled Zero Typing, Antibiograph Profiling, and Whole Genome Sequencing of Salmonella Enterica, Subspecies Enterica H3X1 from Eggshell Rinsed from Select Egg Retail Stores in Barangay Batong Malaki, Los Banos, Laguna, Philippines. Hello. So good afternoon everyone. I am Lawrence Becerra from the University of the Philippines, Los Banos. And today I'm going to present our research paper entitled Serotyping Antibiogram Profiling and Whole Genome Sequencing of Salmonella Enterica Subspecies Enterica Isolate H3X1 from Eggshell Rinsay from Select Egg Retail Stores from Barangay Batong Malaki, Los Banos, Laguna. And for the introduction, we Filipinos do love to eat. It is evident in our culture that we consume a lot of animal-derived food products, including eggs. Eggs are considered a staple in the Filipino diet since uh, it's affordable and has high nutritional value. Looking specifically at the Calabarzon region, this specific region um, recorded a high production and consumption of chicken eggs in the past year. With this increase in production and consumption, the risk of, of acquiring egg-associated pathogens, particularly salmonella, also increases. Especially that salmonella was identified as one of the primary leading infectious disease agents contributing to the cases of foodborne illnesses worldwide, in which the World Health Organization recorded approximately 600 million people reported ill due, due to food-related hazards in their first estimate. Hence, salmonella is uh, still a significant public health burden up to this day. Hence, its continued surveillance and detection is crucial and necessary. However, in countries like the Philippines, we are still lagging behind in terms of surveillance and detection of salmonella because of the lack of resources and institutional support. Our country is still reliant on the traditional methods of serotyping and antibiotic susceptibility testing, which are limited in terms of their sensitivity and turnaround time, which are crucial when conducting outbreak investigations. Hence, we decided to pursue our study with the objectives of isolating pure cultures of salmonella from actual rinsate and then to serotype representative salmonella isolate using DNA microRNA-based platform check and trace salmonella assay and then to determine antibiotic susceptibility profiles of representative salmonella isolates using this diffusion method and then to conduct a genome-based serobar prediction for representative salmonella isolate using salmonella in silico typing resource and then to conduct a resistance to predict the system of representative salmonella isolate in silico using resistance gene identifier tool. And for materials and methods, we utilized convenient sampling in our study. We selected, conveniently selected 16 retail stores around Batong Malake um, based on their proximity and availability to the researchers. Um, we collected six eggs per store and we amassed a total of 96 eggs throughout the study. And these eggs were, were transported within two hours of collection at ambient temperature. And then it was immediately processed using, through rinsing, using 60 ml of buffered peptone water, which, were, which will then be um, incubated at 37 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. And then the rinsing after incubation, um, 0.1 ml of it was, was inoculated to Rappaport Vasiliadis broth for selective enrichment, incubated at 41 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. And then, um, a loophole from the selective enrichment was tricked and silo slicing the oxycholate medium and hectoid enteric agar, and then incubated at 35 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. 
And then, typical and atypical colonists were marked on the plate and observed for their colonial morphology, and then subjected to gram staining to observe gram reaction, cell shape, and arrangement. And then, the same typical and atypical colonists were subjected to three biochemical testing using lysine iron agar, triple sugar iron agar, and urea broth, which were incubated at 35 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. And then, presumptive isolates based on biochemical reactions were subjected to DNA extraction, which, will then, which were used for amplification of in the gene for further confirmation. And then, um, representative isolates of salmonella were strict on a nutrient agar and then incubated at 35 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. And then a well-isolated colony were pick, was picked using a colony picker and then immersed in a lysis solution, incubated at 99 degrees Celsius for 15 hours. And then for the concept of detection, uh, stereotype detection using check and trace assay, the DNA target sequence will be that uh, will be recognized by a specific probe containing a unique zip code corresponding to a specific location on, a, on the microarray. And then um, probes that resembles the DNA target sequence was, um, will be, was ligated by DNA ligase and then only those ligated probes were able to produce amplified products which were transferred on the array tubes and then where the microarray was located and then where the amplified products will be hybridized and visualized using bicolorimetric detection upon insertion of the RA tube. And then generation and analysis of RA image will be produced. And then for the antibiotic stability testing, a standardized inoculum was stripped on whether Hinton agar plate. And then disks of antibiotic cho antibiotics chosen were placed evenly on the surface of the plate and then incubated at 35 degrees Celsius for 16 to 24 hours. And then after incubation, the diameter of the zone of inhibition was, me was measured using a caliper. And then for the whole genome sequencing, basically, we use um, Oxford nanopore technologies employing the fungal protocol, and then the assembled whole genome was input in salmonella in silico typing resource and then resistance gene identifier tool for genome-based serovar prediction and prediction of antibiotic resistance genes. And then for the results in discussion, 13 of the 75, 79 bacterial isolates produce typical uh, produce salmonella features based on colonial morphology and, salmon and biochemical reactions. And only four of these 13 isolates were typical hydrogen sulfide producers. As shown in this table, that the 13 presumptive isolates um, produce expected results for salmonella in TSI, LIA, and urea broth. And then here, um, 12 of the 13 presumptive isolates produce bands on the expected info gene size of 284 base pairs with the exception of isolate A3X. And then for the result for um, using struck and trace salmonella assay, we only use isolates H3X1, H3H, H2X, and H2H as representative isolates because they are the typical hydrogen sulfide producers. And we were able to confirm that these four isolates stereotype using CTS assay are Salmonella enterica serovar adelie. And the detection of this particular serotype in this study was the first report in the Philippines. It was not among the 69 serotypes previously reported on the 15 year serotype di distribution and antimicrobial resistance report by, in, by RITM. And then it was not also reported by, in, the, in a similar study assessing Salmonella serotypes in eggs sold at uh, public wet markets in Metro Manila. And then for the result of antibiotic susceptibility testing, the four isolates exhibited resistance to erythromycin and then intermediate result to CFTFR and only isolates H2X and H3H were resistant to the micacin. And then using the, um, we randomly chose um, an isolate, which is the isolate H3X1 for whole genome sequencing and upon inputting the assembled whole genome on sister, we confirmed that it is indeed server adelaide conferring with the result of the CTS assay. And then for the result of in silico prediction of antimicrobial resistance gene, we found out that 27 antimicrobial resistance genes were present on isolate H3X and it can confer resistance to 14 kinds of antibiotic classes. But I would like to highlight that 40.74% of the identified AMR genes could confer resistance to beta-lactams, which were reflected on the intermediate result 
um, H to X1 on distribution method, and then 33.33% of the identified AMR genes were can confer resistance to macrolides, which were reflected also by the resistance exhibited by isolate H3X1 on erythromycin. And then for the conclusion, the first report of Salmonella Cerevar Adelaide in the, this study highlights that there are still un, previously undetected and unreported Salmonella serotypes in the country, hence emphasizing the need for continued surveillance and stringent food safety measures in the country. And then also, erythromycin was found to be the least effective among the antibiotics tested. And that the emergence of erythromycin-resistant salmonella could be attributed to its excessive use as feed aid to prevent chronic respiratory diseases and treatment to campylobacteriosis in poultry. And then for the, the significance of this study, the study highlights the importance of having alternative molecular approach um, as a substitute for the conventional phenotypic-based stereotyping method and testing of antibiotic susceptibility, since they can offer a much more faster detection outcomes. And also, the identification of salmonella in eggs presents a significant food safety constraint. Hence, adopting a One Health approach is encouraged for the systematic and integrated management of potential sources of contamination in, to protect both animal and human populations. And before I end my presentation, I would like to acknowledge the Bioassets Corporation for their invaluable support in enabling our research through the provision of access to check and trace salmonella technology and whole genome sequencing. And here is the, are the major literature cited, and thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence Misera, for your presentation. Now, judges, uh, you may now ask questions to the presenter. Uh, hello, good afternoon, Lawrence. And thank you very much for uh, that presentation. Um, I understand that the genome of this particular strain, H3X1, is a complete genome for this cerovar. Yes. Uh, considering that there's roughly 500 plus uh, deposited genomes in NCDI for this strain. Um, what do you think is the advantage of having your data set deposited there? Um, actually, um, the, I think the main advantage of our data being deposited in NCDI would, um, would provide, since it's a first report in our country, it would be, um, provide more context in more information in the context of the Philippines, since most of the data in the NCBI would be um, from other countries. Um, since <coughs> we have different conditions and practices in poultry, um, it could also reflect on that and um, other researchers um, interested on studying this particular serovar in the context of our country, um, it would be much more easier and informative for them to use um, as particular, this particular serovar isolated in this in our locally so that um, since yeah it could uh, it could offer more context context in terms of um, studying this particular server in our country yeah because the 521 deposited genome it is only your genome that so is complete. complete the rest are graph yes so it essentially equates to maybe becoming the reference genome uh, on a more technical uh, side, uh, uh, reading your manuscript, it says that the BUSCO analysis is only equivalent to 93%. Why do you think that is the case? Um, BUSCO is the completeness of the open reading frames, uh, the essential genes in the genome. Um, actually, um, um, about that BUSCO um, genes, uh, I was uh, it's still beyond on my knowledge because we sent it actually to bioassets and they, they performed the whole genome sequencing. So, um, yes. So, so you can uh, maybe perhaps investigate yes. uh, more on the bioinformatic and genome mining of your complete genome yes. in the future. Thank you, Lawrence. Yeah. Lawrence, can you further uh, expound on one? Why you pick H three X one? Cause I meron kang can you show your graph with the resistant uh, table pala yun. Yes. Oh, 
kung titingnan mo yung H3X1, um, bakit siya ang pinili mo? Uh, actually, um, it would be more beneficial if we sequence the other one, the other isolates which are resistant to resistant yeah. However, when we conducted the whole genome sequencing, we were we were still not able to perform this test. So we first randomly pick and isolate among these four, and then before we tested it using the uh, distribution method. Okay. Thank you. Hello, Lawrence. Thank you for your paper. I have. Uh, few questions. Um, one is, you have 16 sampling sites? Yes. 16, and all of this uh, have positive? Um, only, not all stores. Um, not all stores actually produce um, presumptive isolates. Uh, only stores from Store A, E, H, K, O, B were able to produce, to yield a typical, a typical and typical salmonella acid. Okay. Uh, where do you think the salmonella contaminant came from? Um, that's, actually, that's one of our, the limitations of our study. Since, it would, since we are utilizing the check and trace salmonella technology, it would be advantageous for us to trace from different stages of poultry and egg production. However, we were not able to trace, the, for example, the supplier of the eggs from the stores since we were not uh, due to limited time also. But, um, good, but um, usually, um, this, since we are only, we only examine the eggshell rinsing, not the egg content, it is possible that it, the salmonella that salmonella isolated could also come from the environment of the retail store. And can also, since also the, for this particular salmonella isolates were, came from the same store, and then isolate, which also, which also sell fruits, and then knowing this particular cerevar adeline, its first, uh, it caused a multi-strike outbreak in the United States linked to apricot cantaloupes or, and melons. And maybe we could, uh, future studies could investigate the linkage between the fruit and the cross-contamination con cross between the fruit and the egg in the store. Yeah, because uh, since you mentioned this is the first time that this particular set of bar has been uh, reported in the Philippines. In Philippines, so I think it would be very important to also check on its possible uh, source. Okay, uh, now you have those results of your um, putative antimicrobial um, uh, test. Yeah. Um, you did not do any more your uh, phenotype, genotype correlation? No. no. Uh, okay, because uh, there are reports that uh, sometimes they do not really yes. have 100% correlation. Um, you also have, well, it's good, you have your result of your Gen, I mean, your whole genome sequencing. You have a 4.6 megabase pair circular chromosome. You have a uh, what, 29.6 kb circular plus meat and another smaller plus meat. So if you have this, uh, do you have any idea how your um, antimicrobial resistance genes are distributed? Um, 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 in our, gene, our whole genome, Sequence were only utilized for the genome-based server prediction and yeah. prediction of antimicrobial resistance gene, and we were not able to pursue further, further investigation about the virulence genes present aside from invasion. Yeah, because if you have your whole genome sequence, then you know the you know the arrangement of the genes. And in fact, my next question is: Is there a recognizable pathogen in the island, or yeah, uh, that you have? Did we have observed? Actually, we the whole genome are still not fully processed. I like fully analyzed. We only use it. You should, uh, we, we only use it for the purposes of the genome-based survival prediction and pandemic resistance. Mm -hmm. uh, but I believe that it will be utilized for few, further studies also. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much, judges, for your questions, and also thank you very much. 
uh, Mr. Lawrence and Ms. Sarah for answering the questions. Okay, now we have the last among the finalists. Okay, the last presenter is Ms. Ayesha Menchi D. Angeles. And the paper is titled Antimicrobial Activity of Actinobacteria Isolated from Bantueno Gut and Rinsing Collected in and Around the Vicinity of Kamantige Cave, Lobo, Batang Batangas, Philippines. Uh, hello, good afternoon, everyone. I am Ayesa Mechi, DC Angeles from the University of the Philippines, Los Banos. And today I'm going to present our study entitled Antimicrobial Activity Screening of Actinobacteria Isolated from Bat Guano, Gaunt, and Rinsic Collected in and Around the Vicinity of Camantiga Cave, Lobo, Batangas, Philippines, along with my co-authors, Dr. Noel G. Sabino, Mr. Paul John F. Flores, Professor Cristel May P. Oliveros, and Dr. Marian P. De Leon. So this study is under the UPLB Museum of Natural History NICER Caves program, particularly Project 4, entitled Phenomic, Genomic, and Metagenomic Analyses of Bat God and Guano Microbiome from Caves in Calabarzon, headed by our project leader, Dr. Marian P. De Leon, particularly under study 2, Phenomic and Genomic of Selected Functional and Pathogenic Bacteria and Molds headed by our study leader, Dr. Noel B. Sabina. Noel G. Sabina, I'm sorry. Now for the outline of the presentation, we'll be having these five. Now the phylo bacteria are omnipresent gram-positive bacteria that have a filamentous morphology due to the high GNC content in their genome. They have a similar morphology to fungi, however, they can still be distinguished with their relatively smaller hyphae. They are considered to be the most robust source of secondary metabolites, particularly antibiotics and other bioactive compounds. They account to be the original source of 75% commercially available antibiotics, particularly the genus Streptomyces. Uh, within cave communities, they are actually the most abundant group of bacteria. They account for 2% to 93% of bacterial communities within caves, and they are often found in cave walls and guano. As for caves, they are rich in minerals, carbonates, sulfates, potassium-rich sediments, and phosphates that provide stable humidity and environment, which is significant in the development of secondary metabolites in actinobacteria. They also provide shelter to bats and in temperate regions. They serve as a site for hibernation and breeding nests during the summer. One of these caves is the Kamantiga Cave located in Lobo, Batangas, Philippines, given by these coordinates. It is a dry cave with no pools inside and they ha it has a, a three interconnected entrances given by figure two and it is classified as class 1C cave by the DENR which is uh, characterized as extremely hazardous and uh, activities are limited to mapping, photography, education, and scientific purposes. And this study proved that the cave and its vicinity are a roosting site for bats. So for us, for the objectives, uh, to isolate actinobacteria from bat samples collected in and around the vicinity of Kamantiga Cave, to characterize actinobacteria isolates, and to screen for the antagonistic activity of actinobacteria isolates against different test organisms. Now let us go through the methodology. So prior to the sample collection, a wildlife gratuitous permit and an institutional animal care use committee or IACUC permit was obtained prior to the sample collection in September 2022. Uh, a total of five different bat species were identified using the key to the bats of the Philippine Islands, namely Tephosus melanopogon, Tenocharis jaggeri, Hipposiderus bicolor, Hipposiderus antricola, and Rhinolophus arquatus. As for the preparation of the guano and gut, they were performed on site. And for the rinsing, part of it was performed on site, while the latter part was performed in the laboratory. For the isolation, uh, it was done using the starch casing agar supplemented with nystatin, and it was done in duplicate plates. 
And for the purification, it was done in three rounds utilizing the ISP2 or the yeast malt extract agar. For, to check for the purity of the isolates, the, a total of 30 mutative actinobacteria isolates were subjected to gram staining. This is because actinobacteria should have a gram positive reaction. Seven out of the 30 mutative actinobacteria isolates tested gram negative. Therefore, a total of 23, 23 isolates were gram positive, and they were sub, uh, uh, for the working codes. So, uh, for the purpose of this study, uh, I created working codes. B stands for Batangas, where the samples were collected. GA for guano, RI for, the, for rinsing, and GU for gut. However, uh, there were no isolates that grow from the gut samples after the third round of the purification. Next, these 23 isolates were then subjected to cultural and morphological characterization. Uh, for the cultural characterization, uh, I also utilized the ISP2 agar to check for the colony morphology, ISP6 agar or the peptone yeast extract iron agar to check for the growth and the produced diffusible pigments of the putative actinobacteria isolates. They were incubated at 30 degrees Celsius for 21 days, observed every 7 days. As for the morphological characterization, slide culture method was used for the 23 isolates and the slides and cover slips were preserved using lactophenol cotton blue. It was then again uh, done for the isolates exhibiting antagonistic activity against the test organisms. However, a limitation was faced and only the agar block was only um, observed under 40x magnification. Now as for the assay, there were two assays done for the study. First is the primary assay or the agar plug assay wherein the isolates were grown on a solid culture medium. And figure three shows the pattern used for agar plug assay for the respective designation of isolates in each plate. Those isolates are having anti uh, antagonistic activity against the test organisms were then subjected to a confirmatory assay or the agar well diffusion method wherein they were now grown on liquid media. These are the test organisms used. And lastly, for the biochemical tests, this involved the IMVIC test series to further classify the isolates having antagonistic activity against the test organisms until their family level. As for the results, Table 1 shows the cultural characteristics of the 23 putative actinobacteria isolates as observed from ISP2 agar. As you can see, they have a diverse colony morphology and most of them are dry. However, for, uh, I will show you the sample plates of BGA12 and BRI04 as, re as representatives for dry and smooth colonies. Here are they. And for the ISP6, only four out of the 23 isolates were able to grow in this media. This is because only these four were able to utilize the nutrients and conditions provided by the agar. This is BGA03, BGA06, BGA09, and BRI04. As for the morphological characterization, figure 4 shows the gram reaction of isolates from guano. They are all gram positive and have a diverse cell morphology. Same as shown in figure 5, the gram reaction of isolates from the rinsing, all gram positive and have a diverse cell morphology. Now for the results of the antimicrobial activity screening, first for the agar plug assay. Against Escherichia coli MCC MNH1700, BRI01 and BRI03 exhibited activity, and here are the sample plates. For Piera Zinosa, we have BGA01 and BRI01. For Shigella SPP, we have BGA02 and BRI01. And lastly, for Staphylococcus aureus, we have BRI01 and BRI06. Next is for the agar well diffusion assay or the confirmatory assay. 
As you can see, there will be differences in the results and some of the isolates exhibiting activity against the test organisms did not exhibit antagonistic activity in this assay anymore. This could be accounted to the difference of the culture media use because in the agroplug assay, we use solid media. As for the confirmatory assay, it was solely grown on liquid media and it was used in the assay. Another is that the period of incubation for the agroplug assay, it was incubated for 48 hours, while for the agarwell diffusion assay, it was only incubated for 24 hours. Uh, longer incubation time uh, may let the uh, uh, secondary metabolites or the bioactive compounds to diffuse further and create bigger zone of inhibitions. And lastly, for the biochemical test, uh, according to the Nan et al. 2010, a uh, positive result for indole methyl red and Vogue's per scour test, while a negative result for citrate utilization test will account for actinomycin, while the opposite results will account for streptomycetaceae. Uh, in this study, only BRI01 had a result for streptomycetaceae, while for the rest of the isolates, or those isolates having antagonistic activity, they have a result of actinomycetaceae. Uh, the result for BRI01, streptomycetaceae, also aligns to the result of the positive control, streptomyces SPA108, which was uh, priorly molecularly identified based on Oliveris et al. 2021. As for the summary and conclusion, 23 putative actinobacteria isolates were collected. And 22% or 5 out of the 23 isolates had antagonistic activity against the test organisms. As for the conclusion, caves are significant reservoir of beneficial microorganisms such as actinobacteria. The isolated putative actinobacteria from samples collected in Kamantige Cave have a great potential to be sources of bioactive compounds that would help in combating the spread of drug-resistant pathogens and the emergence and re-emergence of infectious diseases. As for the recommendation, it is to identify both the isolates and the bioactive compounds that are produced by those isolates having antagonistic activity against the test organisms. Actually, uh, the identification of the isolate is currently on the work. However, the sequences are not yet available as of the moment. These are my res references, and I want to thank the people in the project and those or everyone who made this study possible. Thank you very much. All right, that's uh, the last presentation for this session. Thank you very much, Ms. Ayesa Menchi, the analyst, for the presentation. Judges, you may now ask questions to the presenter. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ayesa. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, reading the manuscript you. and your presentation today. Um, I'm just wondering, you got 30 different isolates uh, that were collected <coughs> from this cave. And the primary criterion that you use is whether they're gram positive or not to essentially conclude that they are actinobacteria. Uh, but recent data suggests that uh, within the phylum, um, there are exceptions, meaning uh, there are uh, gram-variable or even gram-negative actinobacteria. Classical examples of that will be Gardnerella, um, Scharmonospora, uh, or even Thermolophilium. So, what happened to the remain the seven isolates that you kind of did not uh, proceed in your research pipeline? Sure, those seven isolates that were eliminated. Uh, unfortunately, those seven isolates that were eliminated. I was not able to preserve them, si them since the only focus of this study is the gram-positive putative actinobacteria. And during that time, I was not aware of that information. So thank you very much for sharing that. I think it's quite uh, important that, I mean, I, I don't know if you can access this game really often, but it's an opportunity lost if, let's say, those seven are gone, no? Uh, I guess I have a second question here in terms of the activity-guided uh, approach in identifying antimicrobial candidates. 
uh, you mentioned that uh, it's a matter of the media difference or the incubation time. Uh, but there's actually a very uh, big difference between the upper blood assay and the upper well assay that is intrinsic to whether you can conclude that they are you know, susceptible or resistant or there is a candidate drug. What do you think that is? It's something along the line of contact. Um, this is just based on my uh, understanding. It is because in the agar plug assay, more surface there are more surface contacts since we are using a solid media. Unlike for the agar well assay, where we have to use wells, and they're not directly having a contact to the lawn culture of the test organisms. Unlike in the agar plug assay, where in it will be placed inwardly, and then the uh, plugs containing the isolates will have a direct contact to the lawn culture of the test organisms. So the first assay, you still have the organism present and they, their potential antimicrobials can be turned on. Unlike the second assay where you grow it, then you separate the cells and then you use the liquid or the, the exometabolites. So the first one, you're challenging your pathogens. The second one, you're assuming that an antimicrobial was turned on in the absence of the target pathogen. Okay, so maybe in the future you may consider turning on the silent cryptic gene clusters present in your isolates. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lo. Hi, Ayesa.
Albert Reynolds Memorial Center. It has a surface slot for the best. Albert Reynolds Memorial Center. It has over the years this is the second annual event for the second edition of the Christian Society. Three years to be celebrated. But the goals of the community is very true. It is a Thank you. 